All right, folks. Like I said, we have a little video just to, to catch up to the other cohort. If you're a cohort A person tuning in, it's a good reinforcement. We came up with the idea here that the work done by the applied force whoops, in stretching the spring is equal to whatever that final energy position, uh, pos potential energy position is uh, for what's going on. We also said that our work equation is problematic because it's only true if the force is a constant. So let's just talk about there being a constant force for just a minute. So let's say I have a 10 Newton force uh, acts over a 10 meter uh, distance. And if I were gonna graph that, so here is that applied force over some sort of position Right, so I'll just call it x. Um, so say this is going from x equals zero to x equals ten. That's the the displacement I'm undergoing. Right, what would this graph look like? Well, this graph would look like just like that. If this was ten meters, bum 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 bum, and this is ten newtons. Right. So very simply, the work done by the applied force would be the applied force's magnitude, the displacement undergoes cosine of theta. Um, we'll say that that's 10 newtons, uh, 10 meters, and let's say it's in the same dimension or direction, cosine of zero, we would know that that would be 100 joules. My argument is there's something about this graph that also says 100 joules. So what is that? So stop the video for a second and think about it. When you start the video up and you think about this, well, here you go, 100 joules. Well, what about the graph? So there's no point on the graph that says that. The next thing we should think about is slope, but the slope here is zero, so that's not gonna say it. The last thing we should think about is area. And if I look at the area of this graph here, the area uh, would be the base is 10 meters, the height is 10 newtons. Notice that gets me 100 newton meters, which is 100 joules. So here, the area from the trend to the position axis gets me that work. Take a note, on a force versus position graph, the area is the work done by that force. And that's really handy because that allows me to solve the problem with the spring force from before, which was a non-constant force, or at least in this case it does, right? But there's our little, uh, our little fact. The force versus position graph, the area is the work. Now, we've done, we've done area a couple of times. Let's just recall the other two times we looked at the area under a curve. So stop the video and list for me the other two times. All right. Hopefully you're back and you realize the other two times that we've done area under a curve were for a force versus position, or the force versus time graph, in which case the area was impulse. And then the other one we did was a velocity versus time graph, and the area was displacement. Now, interestingly enough, notice force versus time, the area is impulse, which is the change in momentum. And here, this is the velocity versus time graph, and the area is the displacement, which is the change in position. And here I have a force versus position, the area is the work, and work is the change in the energy. That's interesting. Every time that we have derived uh, the area underneath some graph has physical meaning, the physical meaning has always been the change in some quantity. I wonder if that's some sort of fundamental truth of the universe. The answer is, of course it is. Um, or at least it's one of the, the, the underlying uh, uh, ideas that make calculus so important. So going back to this, what we can say here is that that graph is not only the graph of the spring force as I stretch it, or the magnitude of the spring force, this is the same thing as the, the applied force that is used to stretch that spring. Actually, let me go to a clean sheet and redraw that. So here, as I stretch it more, the applied force I need to stretch it more is uh, increasing as well. So if I know then that 
to stretch it by a certain amount, x requires this amount of force, I know that the area then here is the work done by that applied force in order to stretch it, which is kind of neat because here that's an area I can find because this, this force is direct or linear. So this area here would be one half the base, which is in this case x, times the height, which is the magnitude of the spring force. Now, we also said that the magnitude of the spring force was equal to kx, meaning I can take this and go one half x times kx, right? Because I would get a spring force of fs when I stretch it by a distance x or compress it, whatever. Um, if you'll notice then, I can then collapse this to one half kx squared. So the area under this is one half kx squared, which means that that is also equal to the work done by the applied force. And as our argument said, that's also equal to the potential energy stored in a spring that is stretched uh, a distance x. So that's our last equation here. The potential energy that a spring possesses its capacity to affect the environment is a function of its spring constant and how far it is stretched or compressed from the natural length. And that should make sense as a concept, right? A stronger spring, as we were saying it, is going to have more capacity. The more I stretch it, the more capacity it's going to have. But of course, that squared relationship means it's going to have a lot more capacity the more and more I stretch it. And that should make sense because it gets harder and harder to stretch it the more and more I go, meaning I have to fight against a larger force that should tell us I have a larger capacity as well. So in summation, what are the three things, uh, four things I, th I think uh, to take away? One, the spring force is magnitude. The Hooke's law force is equal to kx. Two, we said that um, the work under a force versus uh, position graph is equal uh, to the work done by that force. Three, that our equation work is equal to force displacement cosine theta is only true for constant forces. And thank the Lord that most of our forces have been constant. So that has not been a problem. And four, the potential energy that, is, that a spring possesses when it's deviated from its natural length is equal to one half kx squared. And so those are the things that you need to know.